we've seen Bitcoin surging despite this crackdown on crypto companies and also I guess you could call it an increasingly risk averse market as a result of this Credit Suisse UBS debacle and at the same time the collapse of SVB in the United States. Could crypto have run harder though as a result of that banking crisis when fiat is under so much pressure? Why aren't we seeing Bitcoin shoot the lights out right now? Oh, I don't know if we're saying why is not shooting the flood lights out. We'll get back to that in a second. I think with U.S. banking, it's certainly interesting as to what is happening in, with U.S. banks uh, and what the Fed does next to try and ease concerns around the ongoing viability, especially for the, for the regional banks. And while U.S. dollars is still the world's reserve currency, it's definitely creating uh, uncertainty. And it's usually in, in these conditions that we see risk assets like Bitcoin thrive. And in short, I think we're about to embark on a, on a perfect storm. Going back to where we are with overall performance, Bitcoin is up you know, 65% year to date. Ethereum is up almost 50% year to date. If you think about overall market performance of many other asset classes, I think uh, investors holding on to these two crypto majors are, are probably feeling pretty good right now. Dave, in your mind, what does this mean for um, sort of the location of the crypto crowd? Because obviously we've seen major moves by the UAE, Dubai and Abu Dhabi um, to bring folks here. And, and part of that initiative was essentially saying, if you're going to come here, if you're going to base here, we want you to actually write the regulatory framework with us. You're suggesting, though, that since Hong Kong is back now, you know, post uh, COVID um, and business as usual, that that could potentially become the center of gravity for these digital assets. Absolutely. If you think about where the, the center of gravity has been for the last few years around digital assets, it's certainly been the U.S. But, you know, the U.S. It has a, a myriad of regulations uh, with varying laws and obligations to adhere to. And, you know, we heard from the CFTC just before uh, this segment and some of the claims being made by securities regulators in the states suggest that a large number of the digital assets traded are, in fact, unregulated securities. And if such lawsuits are successful, it's possible we, we might see one of the largest culminations of class action lawsuits against some of the most prominent crypto venues in the world. And if that happens, uh, who knows, every major player in the US might be wiped out. The US is a very difficult region to navigate from a regulatory standpoint. For example, the SEC suggests that Ethereum is a security, whereas the CFTC, the CFTC suggests it's a, it's a commodity. Perhaps they sue each other, I, I'm not sure. Um, I do suspect that the crypto crackdown in the US will lead to participants being pushed offshore. And I think it will also increase the pace of innovation into DeFi, which will naturally create, create a, an eventual feedback loop into regulated products. I think the rumored you know, Operation Choke Point 2.0 is very quickly turning into an Operation Choke Yourself. Um, you we talked about Asia and we've talked about Hong Kong. I, I think uh, Asia and Hong Kong is now very likely to become the center of gravity uh, for digital assets. And I'm certainly not saying that in isolation. The CEO of Coinbase, Brian Armstrong, and the CEO of, uh, of Gemini, Cameron Winklevoss, have publicly shared their concerns about what is happening in the US and the opportunity that it is frankly handing to the East. In Hong Kong, the regulatory framework for digital assets is miles ahead of any other region because it's under the purview of the securities regular, regulator, namely the, the Securities and Futures Commission. OSL, we were the first licensed operator in Hong Kong, and our right. unwavering strategy to... Sorry, Dan? 